Working again on the Cub Cadet forklift. So this is a 50 year old Cub Cadet. We've turned around this uh, dash and we're driving it in the opposite direction, driving it backwards. I've got the lift forklift mast mounted to the back of the tractor. Now, right now it's leaning, leaning backwards more than it normally ever would. I, I just have it in this position to keep it stable so I don't have any risk of it falling, falling forward. It actually is strapped in that position. Working on the carriage that will hold the forks. And I've just finished cutting out the back plate, backing plate for the carriage. So stick around and we'll see if we can get this assembled. Hey folks, welcome back to the shop. Frank here, continuing work on the garden tractor, Cub Cadet garden tractor, forklift build. So the next step, and this, this mass pivots at the bottom, and we'll have a pair of hydraulic cylinders that will control the tilt, and they'll attach to this pin here. Actually, there's one on the other side as well, and a pin someplace approximately here on the frame. So those hydraulic cylinders are on order and we'll get them in the next week probably. Okay, so we'll, we'll see about those when we get them. But meanwhile, we've got uh, the uh, carriage trolley here and we'll mount the hydraulic cylinder. This is the, the lift cylinder. It's got the pulleys, pulley assembly at the top and we're gonna use uh, quarter inch wire rope from uh, these eyes in the back, one on each side of the cylinder, and to the eyes on the trolley, and that will provide the lifting force for the carriage. We'll bolt the carriage to this trolley.
I just finished cutting out this, what will be the back of the carriage. I'm gonna hold the forks. This is a quarter inch hot roll plate. I need a couple spacers, about 3 16 of an inch, and I have these lock washers, but I don't want them to be lock washers, I just want them to be spacers, so I'm going to take the spring out of them by heating them red hot and then letting them cool. Basically, it's an annealing process, right? So, they're tempered spring steel, heat it red hot, let it cool, loses its temper, and then it becomes no longer a split lock washer, it's just a ring, a spacer. So that's what I need. We'll let those cool.
I'm switching the pivot bolts around so the head is on the outside and the nut is on the inside and I've got these safety nuts which I'm using on the inside and then I've turned this uh, split lock washer into just a spacer you saw me heat it a few minutes ago so that it wouldn't be springy anymore and it's about the size I spacer I need in here to take up the difference not quite enough but it'll be close enough I do need you know the ability for this thing to pivot of course With the safety nuts on the inside, there won't be any issue with this coming undone. It took quite a bit of torque just to get these engaged. All right, I think we're done with that. We can move on to mounting the cylinder.
There's my good puppies. Go ahead, Bruce, Bru, sit. 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 All right. But she's a good boy, but she sits. You're my good boys. My good boys. So this whole pattern is six and a half inches this way, 10 inches this way. I'm gonna mark this. These are approximate locations for the holes, but I'll mark them more accurately center punch them and we'll drill bolt holes, half inch bolt holes on this pattern, six and a half by ten. I'm going to move the holes up about a quarter of an inch because I'm going to cut these bolts off flush here so that'll give the carriage a extra quarter inch movement downward 
and then we'll come up 10 inches doing six and a half and this is eight inches across so three quarters of an inch in let's we'll check this out and see if we're close here that should give us six and a half inches and eh, not quite. Alright, I'm an eighth of an inch short. Move this a sixteenth. So we'll do there. And there. And that puts us right on the money. Got the trolley set up here and the vise on the mill. A couple of uh, machinists, jacks to hold the end. It's pretty well clamped. There's not going to be a whole lot of pressure, but I am past the edge of the vise. I can't slide the trolley any further to the left to get these holes directly over the vise because of the, the rollers are in the way. I've got my holes marked six and a half inches on, by 10 inches on center. They don't coincide with the white dots, which the, uh, is on purpose. I've adjusted the positions a little bit. The white dots were just for uh, initial reference, kind of a sanity check. So we're going to go ahead and drill four holes here. These are this is a half inch bit. These are before half inch bolts. The holes in the carriage back are slightly larger. They're about five eighths of an inch. So it gives a little bit of uh, room for adjustment. Don't have to be so perfectly, perfectly accurate. But we'll go ahead and drill these four holes and then go back and just uh, check them out on the carriage back. I don't know if I can reach six and a half inches over that way or not. We'll see. That's 6.5 on the DRO. And that's right on the money. Okay.
so those are not going to be long enough. So those bolts aren't long enough to engage the safe the nylon insert on the these nuts. So I need a bolts about a half inch longer. All right, so I think this is going to work fine like this. All right, the bolts are located properly. These are the standoffs that will separate the back of the carriage from the trolley uh, to allow for the thickness of the front lip of the mast. I may, I may need to add another washer, I think a half an inch, or these are close to a half inch is what I need, but we'll see when we get to go to the actual installation. Beginning to work on the hydraulics for the lift cylinder here, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do how I'm going to do this. There we go. So this is a hydraulic fitting for the bottom of the cylinder. <laughs> and it's a tight fit. Let me get a pair of spanners. This particular cylinder has half inch iron pipe size threads or connections. And uh, some of them have SAE O-ring connections, a lot of the smaller ones do. This one has iron pipe. Okay, so what I've done is I've made up two of these connections for test purposes. This is a number six JIC cap that I drilled and tapped and put in a Schrader valve. So I can use an air chuck and run air into the cylinder to operate it temporarily so that I can, you know, operate the cylinder you know, without having the hydraulics hooked up. So, maybe not the perfect way to do it. I'm not sure if inside there there's going to be an interference between the bottom of the Schrader valve threads and the... Looks like there may be. Yeah. Well, we'll just try it and see. I don't know. I won't tighten it real tight. I don't want to mess up the... Th it doesn't have to be airtight since it's not, you know, a permanent installation. It's just to get some compressed air into the cylinder to see if we can operate it. You coming in here to make trouble? Huh? Coming in here to make trouble? All right. <laughs> I've got the temporary air fittings on the hydraulic cylinder here and I'm going to go ahead and operate, hopefully operate the cylinder here and uh, see what happens. Alright, that seems to be working. 
All right, there's a little bit of hydraulic fluid, and that's causing some jerky motion, I think. You can see hydraulic fluid coming out of here. Quite a bit of fluid, actually. Okay, that's... Wow. <laughs> I got some compressed air there. All right, well, we're just going to put one of these Schrader valves on at a time. Obviously, you can't have them both on because they they plug up the other side of the cylinder. Okay, that's maximum height. <laughs> Some excitement. Got a little puddle of got a little puddle of hydraulic fluid down here.
Yeah, let that be a lesson. <laughs> you can't put both Schrader valves on and expect it to operate. You need to be able to release the pressure on the opposite side of the cylinder piston. So I had both Schrader valves in. You just want to put one in the side you're going to actuate. Leave the other one open. Okay, well that looks like a good height. It's goes to the top of the mast. Not too far above the top, but high enough certainly to bring the carriage up as high as we want it to go. What I want to do is make sure that I can't pull this trolley out of the mast. So the, the plan then is to, as I've done here, actuate the cylinder to its full height and then lift the trolley up as high as I want it to go. And then run the cable from the bottom of the cylinder inside the mast up over the pulley down to the two eye bolts within the trolley. So the maximum height I can lift is dictated by the maximum extension of the cylinder rod. That way I am sure I can never pull the trolley out of the mast, which would be a disaster, right? Okay, so that's the plan. And that also allows me, you know, in the future or whenever I need to, to remove the trolley if I find I have to put new wheels on it or something then all I have to do is take these two eye bolts out which releases the cable and lift the trolley out of the top of the of the mast and it will pass by that pulley assembly because it's the trolley top, trolley is notched here and at the bottom to pass by that pulley assembly okay so I'm going to go ahead and move the trolley up to its maximum height, put a C-clamp on the frame as I have it here to hold it in that position, and we'll start looking at the cables. As I mentioned uh, previously, I guess an earlier video, I'm going to have two cables, so there'll be redundancy since I am lifting a load with some risk associated with it, though nobody will be under the load, but certainly don't want to drop it. So with two cables, each, each cable rated for the entire load. The cables are rated at 
safe working load, 12, over 1,200 pounds, 1,250 pounds, something like that. That's a safe working load. And remember the stated capacity for the lift is 1,000 pounds. And I'm sure the cable has a margin, safety margin of probably a couple. So any one point of failure won't cause the lift to collapse, the lift to fall. The eye bolts are rated at safe working load of 2,200 pounds each. All right, my lift cylinder is collapsing under its own weight. All right, let me apply, apply some air pressure to it, get it to go back up. Trying to work inside the mass like that's more trouble than it's worth. I think I can just as easily. Do it this way. Or more easily. Just easier to take the eye bolt out and do it that way than to struggle with it back here behind the cylinder. Using compressed air, I think it was able to verify that I get full travel of the trolley all the way from the bottom. At the bottom I have actually have excess cable all the way to the top. And uh, yeah, looks like looks like I have excess cable at the bottom of the travel. We'll check it out. Uh, we can make adjustments if we need to. And of course, it goes all the way to the top, which is my biggest, you know, the biggest concern is I want it to go as high as possible. So using a compressed air is not the greatest idea. There's a lot of friction in this cylinder and the air being compressible, you know, goes in and causes erratic and, you know, potentially even dangerous you know, operation of the, of the cylinder. So I'm going to let that stop doing that for a while. And, uh, I think I've proved the proper travel. So I'm in feeling good about that at this point. I'm going to show All right, folks, that's it for this week. Uh, got a good bit accomplished as far as uh, the mast and putting the mast together and the lift mechanism. We'll come back next week, continue working on the uh, carriage assembly. We've got to cut out some rails, weld them on here, make sure they fit the forks, uh, support the forks, and then we'll be be bolt this backer to the trolley inside the mast, which will, you know, then carry the, the carriage up and down. Uh, I think everything here is working out fine as far as the cables and the, the lift pulley. So I'm 
Um, so far, I think it's working fine. We'll see how it goes, and if we need to make some adjustments, we can, we can do that as well. After that, we're going to shift our focus to the hydraulic system. Got uh, hoses from the hydraulic pump, going to come up to a valve. We'll put a backing plate across behind the dash here, and we'll have the valve over here on the right-hand side with two levers, one for tilt, one for lift. We'll, hopefully the lift, the tilt cylinders will be here, and we can get the tilt cylinders installed on both sides. And should be getting a working lift here in, a, in the next week or so. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate everybody that watches the videos. Uh, I, I guess when I started this um, channel over, I don't know, it was almost two years ago, um, I wasn't expecting, you know, uh, a great deal of um, viewership. Actually, I posted the original, vi view, original videos of the motor grader for some friends. And I turn around a month later and it has, I don't know, half a million views or something. I just was astounded. Um, so that kind of got me going on this. Uh, but I do really appreciate everybody's, everybody watching the videos. Um, and if you aren't already subscribed, it'd be great if you could subscribe uh, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment. I do read all the comments. Um, great comments, a lot of good su suggestions. Uh, I'm clearly not the uh, smartest guy <laughs> in the room here. A lot of great suggestions and I enjoy, enjoy reading them. Uh, some of them uh, I do go back and, and implement uh, some of the suggestions. Some of the suggestions uh, are since there's a production delay, I mean, between the time I record this video, so here it is the week after Christmas. This is, um, today is December 30th. So you won't see this video till, uh, for a couple of months, you won't see it till end of February or first of, first of March. So in that inter, inter um, vening, eight episodes there are things i do that people comment will comment on and uh the things that i recognize and you know correct and meanwhile people are commenting on them and they don't see they don't see the correction for you know several several weeks or a month or more but um, many of them uh, do get do get taken care of eventually so i do appreciate all the all the comments um, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next week.